The Grade 1 Richmond Garden Province Stakes will see 14 fillies and mares go to post over 1,600 metres on the turf course at Hollywood Bets Gravel. Run at weight for age, it's a test of true ability with two of the country's top fillies, Princess Keller and Desert Miracle, renewing their rivalry. Mr. Terry's filly and Mr. The Cox filly look very hard to beat there. Yeah. So the rest of us, we're just hoping for a place. If it looks like we're fighting for third and fourth. Princess Callow's won eight group races, with four coming this season over the sprint. Princess Callow by four or five lengths. But Princess Callow's going strong from Desert Miracle. She last raced going the mile in April 2022, when winning the Grade 1 HSH Princess Charlene Empress Club Stakes at Turpentine. Princess Callow wins. She gets a Turpentine mile that we know, so uh, she should be very comfortable with the Gravel mile. So third run after the rest, I can't have it in much better shape. You know, Richard's done not too much wrong on, on, on Keller. Princess Keller's finished ahead of Desert Miracle on the two occasions they've met, but this time they go 400 metres further. Well, she sets the standard at the moment. She's a two-time Group 1 winner over the mile this season. So obviously very healthy respect for her, especially with Simeon up. But uh, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a battle, but we're ready for it. Whilst Princess Keller is a sprinter miler, her rival Desert Miracle, seen winning this year's running of the Grade 1 HSH Princess Charlene Empress Club Stakes, is particularly effective from a mile and further. Mike, could we see a more evenly matched race between her and Princess Keller now that it's over the mile? Yeah, I think a mile is her best trip, as I've always maintained. It's just, you know, we used to um, struggle with the bleeding with her, um, but she seems to be very good at of late. So we were sprinting her for a while, which you were trying to make a miler a sprinter, which she wasn't. She is a miler. The other filly is obviously a super impressive filly and very versatile as well, as she's a group one winner over a mile to a turf and teen. So I think it would be a close contest, but, you know, we've got to find three lengths quite a lot. Marina is a half-sister to the 2017 Hollywood Bets Durban July winner Marin Oresco. As a multiple graded stakes winner, she's nevertheless hunting for that elusive grade one. Marina, is going on the Marina had a one run up in, in Durban in the Bull Lavington. She just needed her run a little bit. I think she'll be a better filly on Saturday. Obviously back down in trip, you know, it's a touch on the short side from her, but she ran second in this race last year, so she is quite capable. Marina in behind these going to the post. Obviously a tough race this year, two, you know, really good fillies that she has to beat, but uh, certainly could have a money chance. At a rating of 114, Feather Boa is 10 points below Desert Miracle and 13 below Princess Kala. In any other year, she'd be top of the pile, but can be counted on to be competitive, having only missed the frame once in all 13 of her starts, and that being her debut as a juvenile. Yeah, look, it's never easy to draw 14, especially over the mile with Gravel. Um, her last run was a good run. She carried top weight in the pinnacle in Joburg. Yeah. And uh, Mr. Pettigrew only had her about like 70, 80 percent ready. And uh, she, she ran a tremendous race. Uh, she just ran out of it that last little bit. Um, she stripped now fit to horse. She's doing well at home. And yeah, the draw, we're just going to have to play it by ear. But she's a very honest filly and she always gives of her best. And I'm sure she'll be eating the lunch. Strong. Stable companion to Desert Miracle, Humdinger, turned it on in the recent Grade 2 East Coast Radio Tabashina Stakes going the 1400 to land the second graded stakes win of her career. If Humdinger brings her Tabashina Stakes form, could she be in the mix? She could be because she's um, very honest. This is just an extremely tough filly. She's unbelievable. She's um, very sound and just gets on with the job and if she gets a, a nice, good early position, she always gives of, the, of her best. Again, I think a mile's stretching her a little bit yeah. in this company. She has won a mile, but her best trip is seven furlongs. Golden Hostess. Get like Feather Boa, Golden Hostess has made the frame in all her runs bar one. Although both fillies are three-time winners and have been grade one placed when going the mile, both are yet to win over the trip. Golden Hostess, also a filly that's done nothing wrong, being one of the most consistent fillies I have. Um, Mile is sometimes just a touch on the far side for her, so that is a little factor, but uh, she ran third to these fillies in the Group 1 in Cape Town at the end of our season, so she's quite capable of being you know, a filly that could finish in the money here again. 
Since March, Rennie has improved three lengths on Bless My Stars, who lines up in the Hollywood Bets Durban July. She's a filly on the up and from the inform yard of Brett and James Crawford. Rennie, um, lining up for the Garden Province, this filly's in fine, fine fettle. Um, she's doing exceptionally well at home. I thought her last run on the amount of work and um, time that we had in in preparation with her, I thought it was an outstanding run by her. Um, she was in bad need of it and um, yeah, for a prep run I would have preferred to have given her at least another 10 days or so um, just to get her that little bit of extra work into her leading into that race. But um, in saying that I thought it was a phenomenal run. Sure, she's come on a ton from it and um, yeah, I think she's going to be very competitive in the, the Garden Province. She's got a good draw on her back. She's got the, the usual pilot, so yeah, couldn't be happy with her. Um, her preparation's all gone smoothly. She's looking very, very good, and um, I think she's going to be a competitive run on the day. Gimme a shot will need to find the form, which saw her land a double of wins at the end of last year. Gimme a shot wins well. Uh, she's a filly that uh, you know she's been pretty consistent throughout the season, putting up fair performances, uh, having won the Ipitombi. Uh, I do think that she's a filly over the miles. She does need everything to go away. Uh, but a gravel mile seems to be a little bit easier than what a turpentine standside mile is. I've always been of the opinion the 1400 is probably her best trip. So a mile at gravel, I think, uh, could be right up her alley. There's a very healthy respect for Princess Keller and Desert Miracle in the race for many reasons, mainly because they've just had great seasons and they both haven't done much wrong. Um, I think something that we can consider is uh, Princess Keller hasn't run over the mile for over a year now, uh, hoping that that could be in our favour. Uh, Desert Merkel with swimming on a board, I think that's a massive factor and that's, uh, we've got to have a healthy respect for that. However, the field itself is very competitive. Um, Marina ran a good, race in the, a good run in this race last year. We've got Feather Boa for Mr. Pettigrew. She's been a super consistent filly for him throughout the season, knocking on the door. Um, she, it wouldn't be out of her way to deserve winning a race like this, if I could put it that way. But uh, I'm very happy with our filly, and I'm, a, I'm of the opinion that if things had to go away in the race and she had to find herself in a good position earlier on without having done much work, she could be very effective. Uh, very happy with her prep coming into the race, but like I've said, it's a competitive race, and there's two horses in the race that I think the whole field's probably got a healthy respect for and looking to be the two horses that we most probably have to beat. Going up won the listed World Sports Betting Ladies Mile prior to coming up to KZN. Jumping from the widest gate of all, nothing went her way in the Grade 2 East Coast Radio Tabashina Stakes last time out. Going up, uh, didn't really raise a gallop with last time out, first time at Gravel, you know, after having travelled up and that. So I think you could possibly put a line through that run, but I think she would have some improving to do to feature amongst these fillies. You know, she's just got to behave herself and bring a second last run in Cape Town. She must be sort of a place runner in that type of race, you know. Miss Cool won the Grade 3 3 Troika Stakes going the 1400 metres in January. She's raced five times since, finishing two lengths behind Humdinger in the Grade 2 East Coast Radio Tabashina Stakes last time out. That was over the 1400 metres and now goes the 200 further. She's twice raced over the mile, finishing three lengths back to Lady of Power in the Grade 2 Wilkeborst Drift Gauteng Phillies Guineas in February. Based on that, she could be included in wider trifectas and quartets. Amina won the Grade 2 Zulu Kingdom Golden Slipper on this day last year. She'll be looking to repeat that form. She drew okay, she's drawn eight. I took it on to Gravel and she put up a superb gallop and uh, um, Craig Zaki rode her and he said, my gosh, she's a beautiful filly. He said, uh, she doesn't feel like a sprinter and he said, she, you know, she does everything you ask her to do. Uh, she put up a fantastic workout. I was very, very pleased she galloped with uh, that filly, Ruskova, who's also got some solid form. And um, yeah, look, they didn't give much, too much away, but in themselves, they're very, very well. Um, it's a competitive race, very competitive. And when you look at Sean Terry's filly, um, she's magnificent. But uh, um, a couple of years ago, I had a filly that uh, uh, they said she could never win the Garden Province, and she beat the, the champion filly of Sean Terry's before. So you got a ticket, you got a chance. 
Tipsy Tarragon is holding form well, having won the listed Syringa handicap when going the mile in her penultimate. She since finished third to Humdinger in the Grade 2 East Coast Radio Tabashina Stakes. Um, she's doing well, she's fit, she's working well. Unfortunately, we've got a shocking draw to contend with, and she's not the easiest ride. So um, we're more hoping than expecting anything, but she is well, and anything can happen in the big day. Whilst Feather Boa ran second to Bless My Stars in a pinnacle stakes last time out, Emirate Gina was third. Nicely drawn at four. Her last run was a little bit encouraging. It is a very tough field, but to hoping for a good run, she will travel down to Summerfelt on Friday and race at Gravel on the Saturday. In Joburg, um, she lost a little bit of form and uh, took a small break and her comeback run was very good. So with her comeback run and that very good draw, she, um, she races up there, she shows a lot of speed. So I give her a, big, uh, like I give her a very competitive chance, but she needs to be at her best to beat that kind of field like Desert Miracle and Princess, Princess Keller. But uh, obviously Princess Keller being in a mild, deep draw, we must have a chance. Makara is a multiple winner over the mile, but faces a big step up in class here for her excited connections. It's so exciting to have a runner on July Day, let alone a, gr a grade one, but she's she's come through her last race really, really well. She had a terrible draw in her last start. It was um, the Tavashina. Um, 1400 is a bit sharp for her. She raced three wide, but um, we're drawn on the paint July Day. You know, we ha I said to Jeff and, and Michael, we have to take a chance with the filly and, and you know, it will be a finale. She'll go off to stud this year okay. and um, hoping for a huge run from her. Her work has been excellent. Serena has been riding her every day and uh, hoping for a cracker.